Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are here for something that I promised you a few weeks ago. I promised you a few weeks ago that I would create a fifth look using these two beauties right here. This is the new Odin's Eye collab with Aniela Kanikvist, my friend Angie. She created these two beautiful eyeshadow palettes. It is continuing with her Hella collab with them. It is now her Halloween palettes, the Little Ghost palette and the Trick or Treat palette. She also came out with some lippies, which I am wearing right here as well. I did create a full looks video. I will link that right here if you want to check that out, if you want to hear more information about it but in that video I had mentioned that I wanted to use the two palettes together and I had not gotten around to doing that before the launch so I created this look today I am wearing one of her lippies I used these two beautiful palettes in conjunction with each other and if you want to get ready with me stay tuned stick around because that is what we are doing today. But if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly and I love all things makeup and beauty. I love talking, I love makeup, I love talking about makeup. So if you like to chat about makeup too, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of the K-Bella fam. But I'm gonna zoom you in and we're gonna get started. Okay, so excuse the hair, I have not done it yet, but I'm going to go in with primer. I'm gonna use this Milani eyeshadow primer. I have talked about this in videos before, but occasionally I get dryness on my eyelids. I get eczema on my eyelids, and it can just kind of be tricky to find a primer that does what I want it to do, and helps my shadow stick, and is pigmented, but doesn't, cause eye irritation so this Milani primer it's not really going to give me coverage it's not really going to give me like a clean blank slate to work with but it does do a great job of making my eyeshadow stick and not irritating my eyes so although I do prefer a bit of a, a primer that is a little bit more pigmented this does have a great tacky feeling to it. I normally put it on and it does say you should let it sit for 30 seconds. I can already feel the tack. So I'm just gonna look down and let that dry for a minute. Okay, so I am excited to dip into these two palettes here and use them in conjunction with each other. I have not done that yet. I've used them separately, I love them separately, but I wanna use them together. So I'm kind of trying to gather an idea of what I want to do and how I want to use them together. The nice thing that Angie did, thank you Angie, is she placed some light shadows in here that can be used to kind of set my primer down, which I prefer. So I'm going to go in with Wicked from the Trick or Treat palette. And I just like to take this and put it right here in the crease and I will take it up a little bit to the brow bone. I love to set my primer. I do have people ask me occasionally why I do that. I have small hooded eyes and sometimes I find it easier to just set the crease first and it helps that like hoodedness to not cause an issue with my shadow creasing in the future. Now if you do want like full pigment with your your shadows you are going to lighten them a bit by setting the primer first with a lighter shade but I don't mind I still find I'm able to build my shadows up I just really like to kind of set an overall base there now I think I want to create a fun fall look I'm not a hundred percent sure what I want it to look like yet I have an idea but I'm not 100% sure. I think what I wanna do first is I'm gonna use my Sigma Switch to clean off my Singe Beauty E03, which is a fluffy brush. And I think what I wanna do here is go into the Little Ghost palette and dip into this orange shade in Candy Corn. And I want to use this in my crease. I like it. There are two orange shades in these two palettes. So Candy Corn and then we have this orange right here in Jack-O-Lantern. Jack-O-Lantern is more of like a, like a bright, vibrant orange, whereas Candy Corn is a little bit, I don't know, 
on like the the muted side not quite as bright and I'm not a huge orange fan although I know orange is like the perfect color for the season but orange is not my jam so we are going to take candy corn I am focusing it on like the outer part of my eye but I am taking it in a little bit as well okay so then I want to clean off my E33 from Sigma this is a detailed diffused brush and sticking with the little ghost palette I do want to use this yellow shade here I do believe I used both of these shades before the orange and the yellow when I created my two looks but I want to create a fall vibe so what I'm doing is I'm taking this yellow on the inner corner but I'm also going to blend it over the outer edge of candy corn and I just kind of want to create like a little like a little wraparound situation yellow shadow is not something that I typically use but you know what we're having fun today we are here to play I am on fall break I am a teacher if you did not know and so that is why I've kind of been MIA is I'm back to filming only on the weekends and my daughter has soccer on the weekends I was struggling with some bad migraines last weekend that really wiped me out and the weekend before that we just had a lot going on I'm, I'm going out of town in a couple weekends so I just have not had a chance to really sit down and play and have fun with makeup and that's what I want to do today okay so I'm going to clean off my singe EO4 I, I need to do a deep clean of my brushes and we're going to take a break from the little ghost palette for now and I want to go into the Trick or Treat palette and I want to use this candy apple shade. I do not believe I used that. It looks like it has not been used. And I want to put this right here on the outer part of the lid. And I do plan to deepen out the outer part even more. But I just want to take this. I, I kind of want to keep it like below the crease. I really like the orange and yellow that we have going on there. I want to keep it a little bit lower, but I do want this red to be on the outer part of my eye. So then I'm going in with my BK207, sticking with the Trick or Treat palette, and I want to go into this deep shade right here in Goblin. And we're going to focus this just on the outer part of my eye to get a little bit more depth and dimension. I am super excited because y'all know Angie is my friend, she is my girl, and we are going to be seeing each other soon. I'm so stinking excited. We both live in Texas right now. She is in Austin, I am in Houston, and even though we are fairly close together. We don't really get to see each other that often. I did see her when we went to the Creators and Friends trip in Charleston. Her and Heather Austin were there. They also came out to see me in Houston for the rodeo last March. And then I actually met them for the first time over a year ago now, or just about a year ago, when they were in Austin together and they invited me out there for dinner. I made the trip out there, but we're going to Vegas together. I'm super excited. The Creators and Friends brand, Samantha March, and Simbri from Simbri Thinks, the, the beauty and brains behind Creators and Friends, those wonderful ladies have put together an event, a Christmas party event, since, you know, creators don't really get to have Christmas parties with each other. I'm just doing a little bit of light blending now. But they put together an event that is going to take place in December for like a little holiday party. So I'm excited. We are going, Angie and I, we are going together. We're going to meet up with Heather Austin there. We are all going to stay with each other. Of course, we are going to go to the Creators and Friends event. I think I want to dip into a little bit more of that orange shade and just kind of bring it up a bit. But we also have some other 
fun stuff planned for while we're there too. So I'm just really excited to see them. I miss my friends. I talk to them often on Marco Polo as often as I can. I know it's difficult sometimes for me to get on there between work and kids and I mean everybody's busy everybody's busy but I do get on there as often as I can to check in with my girlfriends because I do wish that I could see them more but I am super super excited for our trip coming up and just to see them because I haven't seen them in a while and I'm ready to hang out with my friends again Okay, so I just cleaned off my BK203. It's my favorite brush for shimmer shades. And we're gonna go into this one right here, which is called Deadly. I do not believe I've used this one. I am going to pick it up on my brush and spray my brush. And then we are going to put it all over the lid, but I think I'm gonna stay out of the inner corner section. I wanna put this on the majority of my lid but I think I wanna put like a yellow on the inner, inner part. I am putting this like over that red, but I'm gonna try and not go completely over that brown shade. This is a pretty like, almost like a red orange, which I was not fully expecting. I am blending it up into the crease a touch. This is a pretty shade. I've, I've mentioned a couple times I don't love oranges. I don't go in with orange often because as a natural redhead, it just makes, makes my hair look even more orange than it already looks, which I am not a huge fan of. But I think this shade is nice because you do have orange, but you have a hint of red too, which I am really digging here. I like that. I think I need a little bit more of goblin though and I just want to bring out the depth even more now I tend to be pretty simple with my eyeshadow looks I tend not to use a ton of shades when creating day-to-day -day looks but like I said I came to play today and I want to use these two palettes together and I want to show you how to do that so we're, we're playing with some shades here and so far I'm liking it I'm just doing a little light blending around the edges. There's nothing on this brush, but I will say, I just took a close-up look of my face to see if I had any fallout, and I really don't. I really do not have fallout. So that is just a good thing to note. On the inner part, I do think I wanna go back into this yellow shade right here in Mummy's Curse. Pretty sure I've used it before. I do wanna go in with, gosh, I need to clean my brushes, y'all. I wanna go in with my Singe E01. This brush is great if you have small hooded eyes like myself and you need to get like in a small area. This brush is great for that. I, I just really, oh, I really need to wash my brushes. Okay, so we are going to go into Mummy's Curse and my plan is I do wanna take it on the inner corner as well, but I'm just gonna put it on that brush on the back there and I'm gonna spray it but I need a different fix plus because this one is like it's time is up here my other fix plus was just spattering at me and not working so we are going to put this right here on the inner corner and wrap it around this is a beautiful beautiful shade and I think it really ties like the yellow orange red vibe together nicely okay so then I need a Sigma pencil brush because that is what I like to use on my lower lash line here I feel like I haven't gone in I've only used I've only used two shades from this one but I want to go in with the green but you know what we'll do We'll use a third shade we will take this iridescent shade and put it on my inner corner at the end sorry y'all I mean I was you know what we could do you know what we could do this is what I should have done let's take a little bit of licorice right Ooh, that's even deeper so there you go that is even licorice is even deeper than that goblin shade 
let's just let's just add more depth and dimension and color you know what I mean I'm trying to create a look with both palettes so I need a little bit more okay back to what we were doing my pencil brush and I want to go into this green in cauldron and I want to put this ooh that's very pigmented on the lower lash line but I also think I kind of want to go in I don't know I need to stop raising my forehead like that because I give myself all of these wrinkles I think I want to go in with Crypt Keeper also which is the green shimmer and put it on top but let me get this down first okay so I'm gonna use the same brush and dip into this bright green shimmer shade which I don't normally put on the inner corner this looks a little bit chunkier too, so I'm gonna spray my brush. And I kind of wanna bring that on the lower lash line. I'm afraid to bring it close to my eye because I do feel like there are particles, so we might just do it like on the outer part, you know what I mean? I don't think any of these shades are considered glitters but I'm afraid to bring it any closer. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave it on the outer part right there. Okay, then I said we were gonna go back into the Little Ghost palette and this shade right here in Cobweb. And I know we put that yellow from the Trick or Treat palette. But we're gonna put Cobweb right over the top just on this inner part to create a bigger pop like that. Okay, let me go ahead and finish up my makeup and I'll be right back. Y'all, if this is not fall in a cup, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. I am absolutely in love with this look that I created using these two palettes together. I think it is so stinking fun and fall and beautiful. I also love the lip combo more than I expected to for this shade, honestly. I did go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude that so desperately needs to be sharpened, but I topped it with one of Angie's lipsticks in this collab with Odin's Eye, and this is Swamp Fog. It's a matte, a liquid lip, which is so incredibly comfortable. It's ridiculous, but it's like the terracotta orange shade that I just didn't know if I was going to get down with it. Because if you look at it, I mean it, it, y'all, postpartum, I just pulled out a clump of my hair. Okay, anyway, I didn't know if I was going to love this shade because looking at it, it is like the shade of my hair, right? Like it's a beautiful terracotta shade, but I actually love it. I think it goes great with the look. Look at these cute little earrings. My friend Amanda, makeup just for fun created these. They're on her Etsy shop, Just For Fun Style. I will have those linked down below, but this is what it's looking like. Y'all, you could even level this up. I normally like to tight line with dark black eyeliner on my top waterline, but I did not do that today because I've had some like eye sensitivity lately, or you could put on a false lash, and I think it would be stunning. Let me know your thoughts down below. Okay, so here's the final look zoomed out. I always find it a bit helpful to kind of take a look at the zoomed out version also or how it would look if you're a little bit further away because let's be real, nobody's going to be like this close to my face today. I mean my children, but other than that, that is it. So here's the look that I created using my friend Angie's two new palettes with Odin's Eye. I just really thought that it would be fun to play with the two together. I was sad that I did not get it to get the two looks together in my four looks video because I planned on doing a fifth look and creating it together, but I'm glad that I got to play today. It gave me an excuse to play with makeup, to play with the two looks, and to kind of create this fall vibe here. So let me know if you picked these up down below. Did you pick up one? Did you pick up both? Did you pick up any of the lip products? I would love to know. And also, before we go, I want to know your thoughts on... Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. I am not a Swifty, okay? I like some of her songs, but like I've never owned an album. I've never seen her in concert. I like her just fine, but like I, I'm not a Swifty. 
and I'm also not a football fan, but I am someone who loves celebrity like dramas, who's dating who. I love all of the Real Housewives. Like they're so drama filled, you know what I mean? And I love hearing about it. I don't want to be in the drama and I like don't want my family or the people that I love to be in it, but I, but I love to hear about it. I love to watch it in the Real Housewives, in Vanderpump Rules, in what's the other one that I watch? Southern Charm. Like I love it. So I have been following the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey love saga, love story. And I know some people think it's fake. So I want to know your thoughts. I don't know that I really have thoughts. I don't know that I've thought about it enough to think about if it's just a PR stunt or if it's real, but I want to know. I want to know your thoughts down below, but that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you subscribe before you go. That way I can see you in the next one. Bye.